Hi, and welcome to Crafts with Ash DIY and Decor. My name's Ashley, and today I'm gonna bring you some amazing nautical DIYs because I am gonna redo my bathroom and I really wanted to make some cute stuff to go in it. First, before we get started, if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell and click the drop down menu for all so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. I upload a couple times a month and I, after a break, am back. So I am so excited to share some fun and new upcoming content just for you. Plus, you can catch all of my DIY videos from last year as well. All right, let's get started. For the first DIY, we're gonna start off super simple. I picked up this little um, pump soap container from the Dollar Tree and I purposely went with the navy theme. And all I'm doing is wrapping around some jute cord at the top and the bottom. Now I'm wrapping it around three times at the top and three times at the bottom. So it's just super simple. And I am using a bunch of hot glue to do this now there are like little grooves in the soap dispenser so that makes it easy to wrap the twine around but I did three times up top as you can see there and then three times at the bottom So in today's video, I have a couple new DIYs plus two nautical themed DIYs I made last year and those DIYs actually inspired my bathroom. So I included those in this video as well. So as you watch me wrap twine around my soap dispenser, I wanna take this opportunity and welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new, thank you so much for stopping by today. I truly hope that you love and enjoy everything you see. If you're returning, thank you so much, especially for hanging around with me while I took my little break. If you missed my last video, I kinda of gave you a life update and a channel update, so you can definitely catch that after you finish this video. I will have it attached to the end of this this YouTube video so that way you can just kind of get up to speed of where I've been and what's been going on <laughs> otherwise I'm so happy that you joined me today and I hope you join me for lots of future content After all my twine was wrapped, I took this little container of mini starfish that I actually had left over from my daughter's first birthday party four years ago. It was mermaid themed. So I have a ton of fish, seashells, sea <laughs> starfish, just a bunch of stuff. I actually got these on Amazon. I can link them in my description box below if you're interested. But I am just randomly hot gluing these starfish all in between the where the twine is around the soap dispenser. Now I will warn you, I don't know if these were real at one point. I don't I don't think so. I know I sound dumb saying that, but these kind of smell fishy. <laughs> like it drives my dog crazy because he can smell some kind of animal, I think. So just beware. It's not too bad, but it's just something I noticed. But that finished this soap dispenser and it's perfect to go in my nautical themed bathroom. So you're going to have to stay tuned till the end because I'm going to show you how I decorated my bathroom and what it looks like all put together. For this second DIY, I'm gonna take this leftover Halloween sign, and I really liked it because it kind of looked like driftwood or like boar, I don't know, it just kind of reminded me of beach theme. So of course I have to start off by cutting off the hanger and getting this dang sticker off the back. And the best way I found to do it was to heat it up with my heat gun, then take my little scraper and just scrape it off. And look how easily that comes off. So definitely recommend heating this up and and then just scraping it off. Mm -hmm. 
Once I scrape this sticker all off, I am going to take some sandpaper and I'm just going to sand down the back of the board just to get the rest of the sticker residue off of there and get it ready for me to paint. Now I do want to cover in these holes, so I'm going to take my spackle. As you can tell, it's kind of dry because, you know, I haven't crafted in a long time, so it kind of sat there and dried up, but it, it still worked. So once the holes were filled, I sanded that down and now I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I am just going to messily I don't even think that's a word but you know just kind of paint over it you can tell I'm not going for full coverage here but I am just kind of getting you know majority covered as a base coat next I'm gonna take a chippy brush and Waverly paint in the color pool and I am just gonna dry brush some of that pool cover color all over the top of this board Next, I'm going to take Waverly Chalk Paint in the color Ocean, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to dry brush that at the bottom, and I'm going to work myself up and kind of blend the two in the middle. Now, if you notice, I'm still using the same brush. I don't care if these two colors um, kind of mix together. That's what I want because I want it to look like the sky is meeting the sea. And you can see that I'm not making it even, the, the darker blue. I'm definitely not making that even at the top because I want it to look like the ocean. Next, I'm going to take a smaller brush, and I'm going to dip it in some Mod Podge. And just in sections I'm going to paint some Mod Podge on and then I'm going to take some sand and go ahead and put some sand over my Mod Podge. Now you can see that I am do putting a thick layer of Mod Podge. You're going to want to do a thick layer. Don't forget that it will dry clear so no worries on that but I'm just kind of sprinkling the sand and and kind of smoothing it out with my finger and I'm going to do this going across the whole bottom of my board. Now, as I apply the Mod Podge and the sand, you can see that I'm not doing it very evenly. I want it to look kind of bumpy and just kind of random, just like how sand would actually be. There's higher points, there's lower points. And then after I go across the whole board, you can see that I'm going to go and fill in any spaces that I feel like needs sand. And that's all there is to this sand part. And I'm just going to kind of make it look sandy. <laughs> Next, I'm going to take these really tiny seashells that I got in a jar from the Dollar Tree. And I'm so sorry I cut off the bottom of this, but I at first started gluing a bunch of them down and then I just didn't like it. It kind of looked cheap and hokey to me. So I ended up just putting four across the bottom of my board because I, I felt like that was just enough. You'll see it in the final reveal when you actually see the whole project completed, but um, yeah, so I'm sorry I accidentally cut that off. <laughs> then to complete this, I cut off the word relax from my Cricut. And if you don't have a Cricut, that's okay. You can use the rub on letters. You can use stickers from the Dollar Tree. You can stencil this on. I thought that this would be really, I actually thought about stenciling it. Um, and then I just ended up cutting it. But there are a lot of options you can use besides the Cricut. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply my word right in the middle of the sign. Now I did feel like the word, the black was kind of bold. So what I'm gonna do is actually take a brush and I'm gonna dip it in that plaster paint and then I'm wiping it off with a wipe just to kind of get most of the paint off. And you can see I'm kind of dry brushing the plaster paint from Waverly all over my word. And I'm doing this just to kind of doll down the uh, black and just to kind of make it more rustic and just kind of you know smooth and airy <laughs> I guess and just you know kind of tone it down a little bit and you can see that it's on there but it's not so dark 
Now to finalize this and add it hanger, I'm just gonna take the nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to tie a knot at one end and then glob a whole bunch of glue on one end of my sign. And I'm kind of going where those holes were. I can kind of see where they were. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other end of the rope. I'm gonna tie a knot and hot glue that down. And that was it. That was it to this project. I think this has to be one of my top favorites out of this whole de video. I absolutely loved how this came out. I think it's so beachy, it's so nautical, and I think it's perfect for a, a bathroom as well. Now you do want to hold your knots down so the glue set and then I just cut off the excess rope there and kind of frayed it at the end and that was it. I love this sign. Now the next DIY is from last year. DIY, I'm gonna start off by using this little mountain sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. And of course the first thing I have to do is take off that dreaming word right on the front. I found it was easy to heat it up with my hair dryer and then just use a scraper tool to go ahead and scrape it off. Now once I got a little part off, you can see it pulled off very easily. It was just getting it started that was just a little difficult. Next I used my screwdriver to take off the hanger on the back. After that, I flipped my sign over and I peeled off the paper that was on the front. As you can see, it came off pretty easy. Then after I got it all off, I went ahead and I sanded down the front of my sign. Next, I took my ruler and I drew a line in the middle of the two little mountains. Now, I don't know if these are supposed to be mountains, but that's what I'm going to call them. Now, I want to separate these two, so that's why I'm drawing the line. Then I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to go back and forth and score it quite a few times. And after I do that, it was easy just to snap in half. After I got the two pieces of part, I took my knife and I just kind of cleaned up the edges a little bit. There was still a little paper hanging over, so I just cut that off. And then I'm gonna take my sandpaper and I'm going to sand the edges down so they're nice and smooth. Real quick, I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I hope you choose to stick around for a while by subscribing to my channel, and I want to thank you for choosing to join me today. If you're returning, thank you so much for coming back. I truly hope that everyone enjoys what they see today. I really did have a lot of fun putting all of these together. And I got a lot of inspiration for these DIYs from my trip to Myrtle Beach. So I could not wait to put what I saw into some great home decor pieces. So I hope you love it. So after I sanded down all the edges and cleaned them up a little bit, I took both of my pieces and I gave them one good coat of ivory chalk paint from Waverly. After my pieces were dry, I took a piece of burlap and cut it to fit the bigger of the triangles. Then I cut off the seams because I'm going to fray the edges. These two triangles are now going to become sails in my project. Then by using some hot glue, I glued my burlap onto the bigger sail. Then I took some scissors and just cut it down so it fit. Hey. 
Next, I took this piece of bamboo that I had left over from a wind chime, and this did come from the Dollar Tree, and I just dry brushed some of that ivory paint all over the bamboo. Now, what I have here are actually two pieces of bamboo on a longer dowel rod, but you're gonna see it later on in the video, I'm actually going to just use the one piece, so I'll take it apart, but you'll see that soon. After that, I took these jumbo craft sticks that I got from Walmart and I'm simply just laying them out because now we're going to make the bottom of our boat. So what I did was I put them underneath the stick and this is I think when I realized that the stick was just a little bit too long. So this, so I'm going to put three of them next to each other and then I'm going to use some painter's tape to tape them all together. Next, I flipped them around and by using a pencil, I drew a little a shape of a boat. And I'm sorry, I kind of went out of frame here, but you can see I'm just making curved lines on either side. And then I'm just going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut on my lines. After that, I'm going to take these little craft sticks and I'm going to cut them down so it fits all three of my cra big craft sticks. And that is how I'm going to glue the big craft sticks all together. <laughs> I hope that made sense. So I'm doing two in the middle and then I'm going to take off the tape. I did not tape take off the tape first because I didn't want the craft sticks to move. So there you go, see, and now they're all together. Then I cut another cra small craft stick in half and I'm just going to put those on either side to give it extra support. So now I'm just trying to figure out where I want to put the bottom of my boat and this is where I decide it's just a little too long. So I pulled one of my bamboo sticks off of the dowel rod and then I'm going to set this up like a boat. Now I did want the bottom of my boat to overlap my stick just a little bit so that's how I'm going to arrange it. So now that I have all of those top pieces, I'm going to get the, a long board that I got from the Dollar Tree, and this is just a big square sign. I apologize, I don't know why I didn't show the front. <laughs> and I'm going to cover this in white chalk paint. Once that was dry, I took my Waverly chalk paint in pool, and I am going to dry brush that on top of my sign going side to side. Now that green paint in that coffee filter is completely dry, so I'm not using green paint at all, it's just still on there, <laughs> but I just didn't wanna confuse you. All I'm doing is taking that pool cover color and I'm going to dry brush that over the top half of my sign. I know it's kinda hard to tell here, but in the photos you'll be able to notice it. Then I'm going to take my chalk paint in the color Ocean and I'm going to dry brush that on the bottom of my sign. Now I am still using the same brush because I do want the two colors to blend where they meet. So I'm just going to put the darker Ocean color at the bottom to represent the Ocean. Now, I kind of felt that the ocean color was just a little too dark, so I just mixed in a little bit of the white. And now I'm kind of mixing all three colors together and dry brushing over that because the ocean has different tones in it, so I wanted to give it more dimension. Thank you. 
While that board was drying, I took the bottom of my boat and a baby wipe and dipped that in Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm gonna use this to faux stain my boat. Now I am making sure to get the edges and sides of my boat as well. Next, I'm gonna take my white Waverly chalk paint and a chippy brush, and I'm just gonna dry brush that chalk paint over my bow. Once both of those pieces were dry, it was time to put all of this together. So I arranged my boat onto my board and then I hit that bamboo stick just one more time with that white paint because I needed it to stand out a little bit more. Then to make the bottom of my boat 3D, I added some of these blocks from the Dollar Tree to the back of the boat, and then I'm going to hot glue that down at the bottom of my board. Now you can see that I stuck the bamboo stick underneath the bottom of my boat. So now I'm just arranging it and making sure I love how it looks. Now before I glue everything down, I took these stencils that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to stencil this entire stencil or whatever fit on that other sail. Now, I loved using these stencils. They were so easy to apply. I just used a small craft stick and just rubbed them right on. They came out clean and crisp, and I would highly recommend these from the Dollar Tree. After I lifted my rub-on transfer off, I just filled in the little bare areas with the little seashells that were on the rub-on sheet. After that, I arranged my boat back together and I started off by hot gluing the stick down on my board first, but in a little bit you're gonna see me peel that off because the sails were not in the middle. Now, before I hot glued the rest of the pieces down, I decided that I wanted to add a little bit more dimension to the pieces by dry brushing some Waverly Antique Wax on the edges of all of my pieces. Then I went ahead and hot glued the rest of my boat accessories down on my board. Now to make it easier, I actually drew a line where I knew my pieces had to go. That way when I had the glue on, I can place them just where they were. After my boat was all glued down, I took some seashells and I glued them to the bottom right side of my boat.
Finally, to add a hanger, I'm using this cotton twine nautical rope that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to tie two knots on two ends of the twine, and then hot glue those knots over the existing holes. Now you do wanna make sure to use a generous amount of hot glue to glue these down. Once they were glued down, I cut off the ends of those knots and that was it. Now I have this super cute boat sign and I think this is so nautical and of course it's rustic because that's so me. But I love the colors in this and I think that those rub-on transfers went so well. Now I did hit this again one more time with that Waverly Antique Wax just to help my little pieces pop from the background but I absolutely love how this came out. I don't know if you're into coastal or nautical or beach theme. I don't decorate like that in my house at all, but if I did, this would be on my wall for sure. Moving right along, I'm going to start off with this little box sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. So of course the first thing I had to do was unwrap it and then I'm going to paint the front of it with two coats of Waverly chalk paint and that's just to cover up all the writing. Now this sign was actually inspired from something I saw on Pinterest and I thought it was hilarious. So I decided to recreate it and it's perfect for a bathroom and you're going to see why in just a second. Now this was before I actually had my ocean paint I had left it at my mom's so I had to kind of create my own kind of navy darker blue so I just mixed some black in with some blue acrylic paint but if I had my ocean I would have used that but I just went ahead and I just kind of again messily I'm just all about making up words uh, brushing on this paint and as you can see I'm going in one direction I didn't want it to be fully covered but I wanted it the majority of it to be covered. And then once that dried, I cut off <laughs> this saying, it says poop deck, and I thought that was hilarious for a bathroom. And then I also cut out a an anchor as well to go ahead and put on it. And then I just placed my anchor and my words on my sign. I actually thought of my grandpa when I made this because I just think he's going to think that this is hilarious. And I, I don't know, I just think he'll get a kick out of this and my dad too. So like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and place my wording and my anchor right in the middle. Next, I did decide to go ahead and paint the sides of the sign in that blue paint. I was just going to kind of, I don't know, add some white or I'm sorry, antique wax to the sides. As you can see, I started that, but then I decided to go for it and just paint the sides. Next, I'm gonna take these silver tacks that I, thumb tacks that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm gonna use my wire cutters to cut off the actual tack part, and then I'm gonna hot glue these down. Now be careful, because they do get hot, because it's metal on hot glue, but I'm gonna hot glue one down in each corner, and then to give it that rustic look, I'm gonna dip a makeup sponge in the Waverly Antique Wax, and I'm just going to just paint over the tacks. I don't have much silver in the bathroom. It's more of like the browns, the blues, the whites, uh, you know, those kind of colors. So that's why I went ahead and changed it. But I thought that sign was hilarious. All right, enjoy this DIY from last year too. This next DIY was really fun to make. So I took this picture from the Dollar Tree and after removing it from its packaging, I'm going to use my heat gun or my hair dryer and a scraper tool to get that black frame off. Now I was very careful because I am going to use this black frame but as you can see it did kind of break but it was an easy fix because all I did was hot glue it back together. Next, I took the sign part and I gave that a good coat of Waverly chalk paint in white and I did make sure to paint the sides of my sign as well. Hey. 
After that dried, I took this pack of craft sticks that I got from Lowe's and I just started cutting them down in different lengths. I did make sure to cut off the curved parts on either end and then I just started laying them out so it just looked like different length boards. And then I just kind of covered this whole thing and just cut them down as I went. Now, when I went to the second row, I made sure that there was a different length stick underneath what was on top, if that makes sense. So I didn't put two of the same size on top of each other or next to each other. And I did this until my whole board was covered. Real quick, this is your friendly reminder that if you're loving what you see today, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it also tells YouTube that you're loving what you see and that you want to see more, and YouTube will put my videos in your suggestions. So be sure to give this video a like for more DIY and home decor inspiration. So when I got to the bottom of the board, I noticed that the craft sticks were going to be too wide to cover up that white space. So I arranged them, made sure that they were all lined up, and they went from side to side. And then I took two other craft sticks, cut them down to how I wanted them to look, and then I decided to go ahead and hot glue those on. Then I proceeded to hot glue the rest of my sticks down on my board. After that, I took my sandpaper and I sanded the edges of my sticks down. That way they were smooth because I did cut them so they were a little jagged, so I wanted to smooth them down. Then I took my scissors and cut off any of the stick that was hanging over and then sanded that down as well. Now when I was cutting this last piece, it did break. So I just had to piece it together again. So I just cut down little pieces and just fit them in and it worked out fine. Once that was done, it was time to paint my board. So I'm gonna be using four different colors. I'm gonna use the Waverly chalk paint in the color pool, Waverly chalk paint in the color mineral, Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory, and Waverly antique wax. And what I started doing was just using all the colors to paint one of my little boards, and I made sure not to put two of the same color next to each other. Now, I did have to give two coats to the pool and the ivory color, and I did this until my whole board was painted. I really had a lot of fun painting this just because it was just fun switching between all of the different colors and testing out where to put every color or trying to figure it out. So this just, I don't know, it's kind of relaxing just painting my sign.
Once that was dry, I took my sandpaper and I sanded this down really well so some of the natural wood was peeking through from underneath. Then I took my Waverly antique wax and I dry brushed over the lighter parts and then I took my Waverly white wax and dry brushed over the entire sign. And I thought that this added a ton of dimension. I love dry brushing the waxes on because it's just, I just love that rustic look. Now, if this is not for you and you don't like the rustic look, you can absolutely skip this step. You don't have to do it. That's the beauty of DIYing. You can do whatever makes you happy. After that, I sanded it down one more time just to help it all blend in. Next, I took that frame and I painted, gave it a coat of ivory chalk paint. Then I took my chippy brush and that Waverly Antique Wax and dry brushed over that. After that was dry, I placed that frame back into the middle of my board and I at this point had not glued it down. Then I took this burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I cut off a piece to fit in the middle of the frame and then I frayed the edges by cutting the edges off and just pulling the strings out. Next I'm going to hot glue that burlap in the middle of the frame and then I'm going to glue down the frame. Next, I took these wooden letters that I got from the Dollar Tree and I pulled out an H, an M, and an E. Now, I did like the natural wood, so I didn't necessarily want to paint these, so I just dry brushed some a Waverly Antique Wax over each of my letters. Now, to create an O, I just pulled out a cute seashell. After that, I just glued all of my pieces down. Then I felt like this needed one final detail, so I took these silver tacks that I got from the Dollar Tree and pushed one in every corner of that frame. And then I brushed over the tacks with that Waverly Antique Wax. I really love this. I think it is perfect for coastal decor. It would be perfect at a beach house or a lake house, and I just love how rustic and beachy this looked. I'm actually going to give this to my mom because the colors behind it, the blue colors, would match perfectly in her bathroom, but I'm actually going to change out the word home for the word bath, and I think she's really going to enjoy it. She's been trying to accessorize her bathroom, and I think that this would fit right in. What do you for the next DIY, I'm gonna go ahead and start off with this little box that I got from the Dollar Tree. And this is like a little shadow box that has all the confetti. And look what happened when I took the wrapper off. <laughs> Some of the confetti actually fell out. So clearly it's not in there very well, but it doesn't matter because I'm gonna take this all apart anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that back off. Now you do wanna be careful because it has nails, like very, very teeny tiny little nails. So just don't poke yourself. So. So I went ahead and got rid of the confetti, popped off all the decoration, and I was gonna go ahead and try to peel off that paper, but I gave up. So I just flipped it over, took off that little hanger, sanded down the holes, and then I'm gonna actually go ahead and decorate that side of the actual 
board. Now you can see I just took off a little nail. So like I said, just watch when you take this off. Now, I started off dry brushing some plaster from Waverly all over this board. I don't really know if it was necessary. I thought I would have to to kind of hide the, you know, the brown peeking through because next I'm going to use the pool color. But like I said, I don't know if this was 100% necessary, but at least it give, gave it a base coast, coat, I guess. So after that, I'm going to go ahead and put that pool cover color. Wow, I cannot talk today. Pool color from Waverly, and I'm going to paint this board with that. Then to bring in the rustic look, I'm just going to dry brush some Waverly Antique Wax all over my board. Now I am paying attention to the sides and the corners, but as you can see, I'm basically just dry brushing it all over going in one direction. Next, I'm gonna take my level, or you can just use a ruler, and I'm going to put it in the center of my board. And by using my paint pen, I'm just going to mark going on either side. Now, the paint pen didn't really show up as well, so next I'm gonna go in with a Sharpie, and I tried my best to make it as straight as possible, but the paint just kind of was bumpy. So I went ahead and did what I could, and then I sanded it down. Next, I'm going to take some sand, actual sand, and I'm going to pour it on the glass part or in the glass part of the frame. Now, I didn't have a lot of like sand color sand, <laughs> like tan color sand, I, but I had a lot of this white sand, but you can use whatever color that you want. So my mistake though here is I put the sand down first, and then I put my seashells and stuff. You're gonna wanna put your seashell, seashells and um, starfish or whatever you, else you wanna put in here down first and then your sand on top of it. I totally wasn't thinking and put my sand down first. So I just kind of put my board on the back and tested it and just to see if I had put enough sand and I thought it was a good amount. So now as you can see, I'm just kind of putting like those little pieces in there and I think I got that from the Dollar Tree as well, but a long time ago. And then I'm gonna use some of those starfish and just kind of push those down. Now the problem with the backing, the, the board on the back, was that it's too small like it doesn't cover the entire back so i actually noticed that when i went to hot glue this on and i flipped it over sand was pouring out from the back so i am going to fix that in just a second but just be aware at first i thought it would fix it if you could see i'm just kind of globbing on the hot glue to go ahead and fill in those creases and the the you know just where the board meets the frame but like i said it didn't really work so what i ended up doing was actually covering the back completely so to fix it i just took some cardboard i traced my frame around the cardboard and then i'm just going to simply hot glue the cardboard to the back and that really helped keep all the sand in you do want to put a generous amount of hot glue in the back, but like I said, that really seemed to fix the problem. This is your friendly reminder that if you love what you see so far, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Not only does it really help my channel to grow, but it tells YouTube you love what you see and you wanna see more. So smash that like button. Next, I got this little like glass decal from the Dollar Tree and it had an anchor on it and I thought it was perfect. So I went ahead and peeled that off. Now for this, I'm only gonna use that anchor and then the wheels underneath. I'm gonna go ahead and apply that to my frame and then I'm gonna do the same thing to the wheels. Now as I was looking at it, I kinda thought that this needed something. So I went ahead and hot glued some skinny twine to the sides or to the front of the frame and now you do want to use a lot of hot glue for this too for some reason I was having trouble with it sticking see 
I did put hot glue there, but it just didn't stick. And I'm just gonna go all the way around my the front of this frame. Now I still felt like it needed something, so I'm gonna take those thumb tacks again and I'm gonna use my wire cutters to go ahead and actually cut off the tack part, just like I did before. And then I'm gonna hot glue one to every corner. Then again, I'm going to take that makeup sponge and the Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to go ahead and apply that on each one of the tacks to just kind of give it that rustic, rusty look. Then while I had my makeup sponge out, I'm going to very lightly go over the sides of my frame as well just to kind of darken it up a little bit but also bring in that rustic, rusty look. I really love how this little sign came out. I think it is so pretty. And I really loved the white sand in this as well. Can't wait to put it in my bathroom. All right, now this is kind of a bonus DIY. I already had this box sitting on top of my toilet to hold toilet paper. And it says, please take a seat on one side. So I thought I'd flip it over and put beach bums on the other side. I thought that would be funny. So I just cut this off of my Cricut and went ahead and applied it. All right, so now that all the DIYs are complete, it's time to look at the final reveal. I really hope that you love how I decorated my bathroom. What do you think? I absolutely loved how my bathroom came out. I think it's perfect for summer decor. And we do have the pool, so I kind of just wanted to follow through with like the relax and oasis and you know, the vacation. I don't know, I just wanted it to be fun. So as you can see, I actually just draped some Dollar Tree uh, netting, uh, Fisher net over the shelves behind my toilet. And then you'll see that I did the same thing over like the actual vanity part. And then those candle holders, I actually had in my daughter's mermaid bathroom, but obviously I stuck them in this bathroom. Now the towel that you're gonna see here in just a second that has the turtle on it um, actually came from Hobby Lobby and I just loved the colors in it and I thought that it went really well in this bathroom but I am absolutely loving how this came out you're gonna see on the vanity part there's a sign that says seize the day that actually came from big lots last year on sale and I actually got it to craft with but I found it in the craft room and I'm like oh my gosh this will go perfect in my bathroom so I threw it up there as well I also went ahead and filled my soap dispenser. So this bathroom is ready to go for whenever guests come over and hang out at the pool and have to go to the bathroom. They can kind of, you know, get the whole beachy vibe there too. So you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments what you think of my nautical themed bathroom. Normally this is not my style at all, but I don't know, I just, those two DIYs I did last year, the one with the boat and the one that said home, those just inspired me to go ahead and just kind of take this theme and run with it in my guest bathroom this year. So definitely let me know what you think. 
If you haven't done so already, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you loved what you see. Also, hit that subscribe button because I have a lot more fun content coming up that I know you're not going to want to miss. And just thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really loved what you saw and just got a lot of DIY inspiration and ideas on how you can decorate a room in your home whether it be a bedroom a bathroom a living room a family room really this nautical beachy theme is perfect to carry through throughout the summer now probably in july i'm going to add some flags or some fourth of july decor in there but it will pair perfectly for this summer theme so i hope you really enjoyed it well, thank you so much for joining me, and until I see you again, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!